Hey guys, welcome to Live and let's get started today. Now, of course, guys, it is Tuesday, but of course, we are doing Monday's material because Monday in British Columbia, Canada was a holiday, right? So that's why we're just going to go with Monday's material. So unfortunately, what that means today, of course, is that we are going to be doing grammar, vocabulary, and some writing in the elective portion. But hopefully, it's kind of fun, right? Now, guys, our topic for this week is something called superlative stories. So you can pretty much guess what the topic or grammar topic for this week is going to be. Of course, it is going to be something called superlatives, right? So, her, la, tibs. However, we're also going to rewind a little bit because we're not just going to talk about superlatives. We're also going to talk about another term related to superlatives, which you usually study first before superlatives, and that is comparatives, right? So we're talking about comparatives and superlatives. And what are comparatives and superlatives? Well, comparatives and superlatives are adjectives. And of course, comparatives are used to describe something in comparison to another thing, right? And when we use superlatives, they are also used to describe something but it's like the most of something, right? Now, when it comes to comparatives and superlatives, it is all about modifying adjectives, right? And there are quite a few rules. That's why we need to get started with this one here, guys. And that is comparative and superlative adjectives. So, please take a look at this with me. Let's go over it together. All right, guys, so on the left-hand side, we have the adjective form, which is the grammar rule. In the middle, we have the comparative. Superlative is on the right, right? Now, the adjective form on the left-hand side here says only one syllable ending in E. So for example, wide, fine, cute. Now, this is the easy form, right? And yeah, okay, that kind of makes sense. So, adjective form. I'm talking about the first one. So, we got one syllable, one syllable. Whoops, sorry guys, my mistake. I'm pretty tired this morning. Ending in E. Wide, fine, cute. Now, our comparative rule here and then superlative rule. So, of course, I'm just kind of copying what is written down on the sheet here, but hopefully I'll add some more details. Now, the rule here is easy for one syllable adjectives ending in R or ending in E, we just add an R. So a word like wide becomes wider. And when we turn it into the superlative form, all we do is add ST and then it becomes widest, right? So pretty easy, right? If we have something like, uh, the next one here was fine, fine, finer, finest, right? Cute, cuter, cutest. Can you guys think of another adjective ending in an E that we could modify? Hmm, let's think of another one. What do we have? Hmm. Anybody got an idea? What is an adjective that ends with an E that we could compare? 
And we have lots of different, ah, okay. Let's think of a word that we often, an adjective we often use to describe elderly people who seem to be smart. We call them wise, right? So wise becomes wiser and wisest. Okay, so that's good enough for number one. So <clears throat> let's move on to number two, guys. Next rule here is only one syllable with one vowel and one consonant at the end, right? So again, one syllable, one syllable with one vowel. Now, of course, you guys know vowels are the opposite of consonants. Vowels are, of course, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. One vowel and one consonant at the end. Okay, so we've got examples like, I don't know, hot, big, fat. Let's just look at hot, right? So, we've got hot, and when we, our rule here is when we convert it into the comparative form, we double the consonant. Double the consonant and add ER. So, of course, hot becomes hotter, right? And for the superlative, again, double the consonant and add EST, right? So the rule is not too hard. Hotter becomes hottest. So can we think of another one? Of course, we could think of the opposite of hot, right? Uh, well, no, we can't think of the opposite of hot. But, hmm, uh, one consonant and the end. Only one syllable. Yeah, yeah, so we could have, yeah, big and then bigger and biggest. I'm trying to think of another fun one, but I think I'll just add it there because these are kind of the simple ones, guys. Okay. So all done with that one, let's move on to the next one, which is not really actually getting all that much harder. But number three is only one syllable again with more than one vowel, with more than one vowel or more than one consonant at the end. Okay, so our examples here are, yeah, let's say light. Let's look at light. So only one syllable with more than one vowel or more than one consonant at the end. So L-I-G-H-T, light. Now, all we do here is we add E-R. And for the superlative form, add E-S-T. So it's very similar to this one. The main difference here is this one here, you're doubling the consonant when you're turning it into the comparative or you're turning it into the superlative form. It is hard to see the difference between the two here, right? Number two, one syllable with one vowel and one consonant at the end. So generally, short words, right? Number three, kind of similar, but only one syllable with more than one vowel or more than one consonant at the end. So that's the difference, right? So just one consonant at the end for hot, but we have two consonants at the end for light, H and T, right? But when we convert them, it's actually pretty easy, right? Light becomes lighter, right? And when we turn it into the superlative form, it just becomes lightest, right? Now, if we think of some more examples here, uh, I don't know, um, hmm, something like, 
da, 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 cool, right? C O O L. So of course here it doesn't follow this rule here because this one is just one vowel and one consonant at the end, right? O and T. But here we've got two vowels in the middle and then a consonant at the end. So cool becomes cooler and coolest, right? Anyhow, that's good enough for number three, but that not that this is hard, but it is sometimes hard to see the difference between two and three. The fourth one here, it's not hard, but if you've got two syllables, two syllables ending in, ah, sorry, two syllables or more. ending in Y. Two syllables or more ending in Y. So things like happy or, I don't know, yeah, silly, whatever. Um, you must use more before, or sorry, you have to change, what am I talking about? Change Y to I, then add ER, which you guys probably already know though, okay, right? So happy, of course, becomes happier, right? And then the same thing with the superlative form, like you basically change Y to I, then add EST. So happiest. So happy, happier, happiest. Silly, sillier, and silliest. And then lonely, lonelier, loneliest. Okay, guys. Um, obviously, like rewriting this on the board. I hope that's been kind of useful. We do have one more, right? So I think what I'll do is just go ahead and erase what we got on the top here, number one. So let me get that off the board for a second. Not for a second, it's not like I'm gonna add it again. But let's take a look at the fifth rule when it comes to comparatives and superlatives. And this rule may seem hard, but it's actually probably the easiest rule to follow because you're not really modifying it too much. But this rule here is two syllables. So two syllables or more. Or more not ending in Y. Okay, so I don't know, something that would be, yeah, interesting or, I don't know, in Intelligent, right? Now our rule here is actually just pretty simple. Use more before the adjective, right? So nothing, nothing complicated, right? So interesting becomes more interesting. Is this class interesting for you? Is it more interesting than watching Netflix? Probably not, probably not, but anyhow, uh, more interesting or more intelligent, right? And of course, for the superlative form, <coughs> instead of using more, you're going to use most. Use most before the adjective. So the most interesting and the most intelligent. Okay, all right, all right. So guys, we got through our list. <clears throat> However, the like, you know, of course in English there are a lot of exceptions because there's always a lot of like irregular things in English, right? And that's why we got you on the back side. Take a look here. Let's look at irregular forms, right? Because the irregular forms, 
ah, it can be kind of tough, right? So irregular comparative and superlative forms. It says some comparative and superlative forms are irregular, of course, right? Things like good. Good becomes better. The superlative is the best. You are the best singer in the show. Bad or well, also well, better, the best, right? Um, bad or badly, worse, the worst. Little, less, the least. Many, more, the most. Far, farther, the farthest. Or far, abstract distance, further, the furthest, right? Okay, so that sheet there, guys, incredibly useful. If you're not like really, really, how can I put it, familiar with the comparative and superlative form of adjectives, please take the time to review this practice it a little bit and try it out, right? But what I think we should do is take a look at some of the exercises here. There's a little bit too much when it comes to the exercises, but let's take a look at the first one. I think the first one you guys have here should say comparison of adjectives, adverbs of manner. Hmm. Okay, so it says complete the sentences with the correct comparative form of the adjective in brackets. So this is a little bit too easy because they gave you the correct adjective, right? So number one here we have an elephant is stronger than a kangaroo. An elephant is stronger than a kangaroo. How about number two? Our teacher is blank fat film star. <laughs> um, yeah, now remember here we are just using comparatives not superlatives in this case, right? Now guys, let me erase the board because it's just too much stuff here. And of course, if this is tough, you can always refer to the sheet, right? Okay. <clears throat> All right, guys. So, number two. Well, in A, right? We already got number one. That's already figured out. But number two, I'm not going to write down the full sentence. It's kind of useless. I gave you guys some time. What do you think? Our teacher is now beautiful. Think about how many syllables is that? Beautiful. Three syllables, right? So, it's got to follow the rule of two or more syllables. The rule with two or more syllables is pretty simple. If it ends with a Y, then we're removing the Y, we're adding an I, and then we're adding ER, right? But, of course, beautiful does not end in Y. So, pretty simple, we just need to add more. So the answer for number two is just more beautiful. So, there we go. Our teacher is more beautiful. Ah. Now, of course, we have to add then too, right? More beautiful than that film star. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Our teacher, or sorry, number three, a school is a hospital. Now, the adjective here is noisy. Now, noisy is two syllables, right? Noisy, noisy. It's ending with a Y. Now, basically, if any adjective ends with a Y, it's pretty easy, right? Remove the Y and then add I E R, right? So instead of noisy, we have noisier. Noisier. And there we go. Okay, number four. Jane's hair is blank yours. And the adjective here is long, right? Long. Now, think about this here. This is where, like, of course, we're looking at adjectives with just one syllable, right? Now, are we just adding an R? Are we adding an ER? Are we doubling the consonant and then adding an ER? What is the rule? That's where it gets just a tiny bit tricky, right? Now, it is just one syllable, L-O-N-G, right? In this case, we are not doubling the consonant. What we are doing, because usually when you double the consonant, it is an even shorter word, right? Usually just three letters, one syllable with one vowel and one consonant, right? But we have L-O-N-G, right? 
So we have two consonants at the end. So in this case, we are just adding ER. Longer, noisier, more beautiful. Anyhow, longer, our teacher is, or number three, school is noisier. Sorry, I should have added then afterwards. I was doing, being too lazy. Okay, number five, guys. Number five, John's work is something merry. Now we've got good. Now good follows that irregular rule. And of course, the comparative form of good is better, right? So John's work is better than Mary's. Hmm. Good, good. OK. Number six, guys. Yesterday was blank today. And our adjective is hot, right? Now, here's a good one, because we got one syllable, right? H-O-T, hot. And we got one vowel, one consonant, O and T. In this case, we will double the consonant, right? So hotter than, right? OK, number seven. What do we got? <clears throat> this is book is interesting, that one. OK, good. So we've got interesting, right? This actually has four syllables. So this adjective is going to follow the comparative rule where we are just adding more, right? More interesting. This book is more interesting than that one. Wow. OK, number eight. Athletes are usually something scientists. I, I don't agree with this. It's true, but I don't agree with this. Um, now we got famous, famous. Now, famous is not one syllable, right? Because famous, two syllables, right? Now, is famous ending with an Y? No, it is not. So, it's more famous. OK, there we go, guys. So that's the first one down. Um, next one here says, write sentences about the pictures. Use the superlative form of the adjective. OK, so the first one here, oh, this is too easy. It's just mixed up, right? The girl is the tallest of the three. The, now, the pyramid ancient of the three. So how do we do this one in B when we're taking a look at the pyramids. And our adjective is ancient. Ancient. So obviously, <coughs> we're going to be using uh, the form where we are adding most, right? So the pyramid is the most ancient of the three, right? Pretty simple. Oh man, this is too easy. Number three, this athlete, good athlete in the world. So number three would be this athlete is the best athlete in the world. Wow. Very confident, that guy, right? February is the shortest. OK, February is the shortest month in the year. And number five here, guys, da -da -da, the red apple, sweet apple in the bowl. The red apple. Is the sweetest apple in the bowl? Okay, now I just gotta give you guys the answer there. I know I'm making this a bit too easy, but we don't have a ton of time, and I do kind of want to get this done before we take a break. Um, let's do C together. C is pretty simple. I think what we'll do here is kind of separate this part here. And then after C, I think I will run through these a little bit faster. Du -du 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 -du. But we'll see. We might not do the other exercise because I think we just spend too much time on exercises. But number one, we got I think Albert Einstein was 
the brilliant scientist in the world, the more brilliant scientist in the world, or the most brilliant scientist in the world? Of course, the correct answer is the most brilliant, right? So you're supposed to circle whichever one you think is correct. Um, so let's take a look at this together. Um, number two, I am a good swimmer than my brother. I am a better swimmer than my brother. I am the best swimmer than my brother. Now, so the tricky thing here is like you have to think like, okay, well, is this supposed to be just the regular form, just a regular adjective? Um, or is it supposed to be the comparative adjective form where I'm comparing something to another thing? Or is it supposed to be the superlative form where I'm saying this thing is the best when it comes to this, right? So this one here, this person is comparing themselves and their swimming abilities to their brother. So in this case, like we do need to modify this adjective. However, is it the comparative form or is it the superlative form? It is not the superlative form because he's just comparing himself to his brother. So we're looking for the comparative form. So in this case, I am a better swimmer than my brother is the right choice. Better. There we go. Butter makes it better. That's what they say when it comes to cooking. Number three. Mom is the person in the family. Mm -hmm. Mom is the busy person in the family. Mom is the busier person in the family. Mom is the busiest person in the family. Now, so when it comes to talking about the family, mom is busier than everybody else, right? So in this case, we can use the superlative form, right? Because compared to everybody else, she's like number one when it comes to being busy, right? So mom is the busiest, right? And of course, busy ending with a Y, so we just remove the Y, we add I-E-S-T, right? So this, I don't know, just a good example there. Okay, let's take a look at number four. We've got, what is the most expensive car in the world? More expensive car in the world. Expensive car in the world. Okay, so we're talking about the entire world, so actually this would be the superlative form, right? So actually the first answer is correct. What is the most expensive car in the world? And actually, I don't know. Maybe some kind of Italian sports car. Maserati? I don't know. Now again, London is something than Athens. Okay, so we're comparing London to Athens in Greece, right? We're just comparing two things. Not the entire world, you know, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, looks like we're going to be using the comparative form. So London is rainy than Athens. Bam, bam. No, London is rainier than Athens, right? Rainier. <laughs> and there we go. All right, and number six, the book was then the film. So we're comparing a book to a film. So it sounds like a comparative form again. The book was frightening than the film. The book was most frightening than the film. No, the book was more frightening. And of course, frightening means scary, right? If you are frightened, you are scared because maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe you're scared of something, right? Anyhow, guys, so we took a look at A, B, and C. We do also have here D and E. Let's just go over these ones quickly. This is kind of useful. We have right adverbs for the adjective. So like the adjective here is dangerous. The ad adverb form is dangerously. Nice becomes what? Nice Lee, right? So if you have a good Korean friend and their name is Lee, like last name Lee, and they're nice, you can say, hey, nice Lee, right? Yeah, a bad joke. Actually, you can make that joke for all of these, right? If you if you're a friend, your Korean friend named Lee, if he's dangerous, you call him Dangerous Lee, right? Dangerous Lee lives dangerously, right? Ugh. Anyhow, number three, fast, right? Fastly, happily, ah, but good and quiet. Those ones are tougher. What do those ones become? Good and quiet, right? Those ones become things like well and quietly, right? Okay, guys, so let's just move on to the last one here. I don't want to waste more time on this. Um, circle the correct word. The dog is eating hungrily. Is she drinking the coffee slowly? Yes, slowly. 
Sue is a nice person or nicely person. Sue is a nice person. We're not using the adverb form. Tom plays tennis good. Tom plays tennis well. Tom plays tennis well. The music was very loud or the music was very loudly. Of course, in this case, just loud. The old lady spoke soft or softly. She spoke softly because you're modifying the verb. Okay. All right, good guys. So we're all done this here. There is also this other one here. Mm. Ay, 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 ay. Um, superlative adjectives. So, uh, okay, let's get started with this. We'll see how it goes. So, guys, please take a look at this sheet here. Superlative adjectives is in the top. And it says complete with a superlative adjective and all the necessary words. So number one here, you got London is city in England, right? Now, you just want to use the superlative form, right? Now, large, right? Large is pretty simple. Large, it's just one syllable, right? And we're using the superlative form. So you're just going to add ST because there's already an E at the end. So London is the largest city in England. Good to know, right? So just a second, guys. Let me erase this here. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, so we're taking a look at number one there, and that was also number one. So London is the largest. Okay, you also have to remember to add the. Cheetahs are animals in the world. Now we've got a one syllable one here, fast, right? So all we got to do is add EST again. Cheetahs are the fastest animals in the world. And there we go. Three, whales are something animals. And we all know whales are the biggest. So of course this one here, because we've got a three letter, one syllable adjective, B-I-G, right? So consonant, vowel, consonant. This one here, you will actually follow that rule where you double the consonant and then add E-S-T. Okay, number four, we've got San Francisco is a beautiful city in the United States. San Francisco is the, now of course, beautiful is three syllables, right? So it's following that rule where you got two or more syllables. It's pretty simple. It's not ending in Y, so you're going to have to use most, right? The most beautiful city in the United States. That's not true actually anymore. San Francisco is definitely a beautiful city, but recently they have a lot of issues with homelessness and this poverty and kind of that kind of stuff. So it's not such a beautiful city anymore, unfortunately. Um, summer is blank season of the year and we have good. Good in the superlative form becomes what? Of course it becomes the best, right? So summer is the best season of the year. I totally disagree. For me, it's fall because I like rain and I like kind of cold weather. Kind of cold weather. I don't like super cold, but I like kind of cold. Anyhow, guys, taking a look at number two. Write the superlative form of each one. Of course, number one, we already looked at this before. Good is the best. Number two, far is the furthest. Number three, expensive becomes the most expensive. Number four, um, old becomes the oldest. Number five, young becomes the youngest. Number six, pretty becomes the prettiest, the prettiest, right? Seven, 
the smallest. And then eight, the nicest. Nine, the most comfortable. And then 10, the bad, bad becomes the worst, right? That is the worst hotel I have ever stayed in. What an awful hotel, right? Now it says, look at the table and write true sentences with the adjectives in the box. Oh, this is not too bad. And is the, I don't know, we got age, we got height, and we've got weight and savings. That's kind of interesting. But then we have a bunch of adjectives that we can modify, right? We have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, thinking about and here, we have you know, four different categories, age, height, weight, savings. Savings is really weird. I don't know why they're talking about the amount of money they have here, uh, but whatever. Uh, if we're talking about number one, you know, and, and is the, now it looks like they want to make a, something in the superlative form, and is the, and we're talking about age, and is the oldest, right? Because James is 34 and Carol is 28. And is the oldest. Oh, poor Anne, right? It's such an old girl, right? Uh, but anyhow, guys, let's stop here for right now. And we'll take a break. After the break, I think we'll finish this off. We'll get into some vocab. And then, of course, in your third class, we'll talk about your assignments. And we will talk about uh, and take a look at a writing example. Sorry that the class got started late today, guys. Um, had some issues, but tomorrow should be OK. All right, guys, so I'll see you again in about 10 minutes, maybe 11 minutes.
Welcome back to Live PST. We are now in our second class. I think for some of you guys out there, maybe you missed the email. You didn't realize that actually we've changed the time, the starting time, from 10 to 9. So from now on, the class is going to go from 9 till 12 o'clock, not 10 till 1 o'clock, right? Anyhow, guys, we're in our second class. We're going to continue here with the exercises for a little bit. And that sheet here was the superlative adjectives exercise, right? And we were taking a look at number three and trying to finish this table here. It says, look at the table and write true sentences with the adjectives in the box. So we had James, Anne, and Carol. And we just finished the first one. Anne is the oldest, right? Because she is 35. Now, number two, we're talking about Carol. And Carol, we're also talking about age. Now, if we think about it here, 34, 35, and Carol is 28. So Carol is the youngest, right? Carol is the youngest. OK, so let's take a look at number three. Number three, we've got height, and we've got James. Now, thinking about height, James is 180, Anne is 170, 1.75, and Carol is 1.72. So James is the tallest. James is the tallest. And number four, uh, we're also talking about height again. We've got Carol. So James is the tallest. Carol is 1.72. So Carol is the shortest. OK. Let's take a look at number five. We've got weight, right? And Anne is the, now thinking about weight here, James is 82, Anne is 85, Carol is 65, so Anne is the heaviest, right? So sorry, Anne. Anne is the heaviest. Taking a look at number six, weight again. Carol is the opposite of Anne. So Carol is the lightest. Number seven here, when we're talking about savings, the amount of money they have saved. Um, OK, so James has 5,350 euro. Anne has 5,500 euro. Carol has 6,000 euros. So Carol is the richest because she has the most money. Carol is the richest. And number eight, um, when it comes to savings, James has the least savings, right? So James is the poorest and poor James. All right. Now, number four here, guys. Number four looks kind of fun. It says, write the opposites. So happiest, most comfortable, easiest, best, nearest, and most expensive, right? So let's just write the opposite. What is the opposite of happiest? Opposite of happiest is pretty easy. It is the saddest. Now, the reason why we're adding the D here, of course, is because sad is a one-syllable adjective with just three letters. And so it's consonant, vowel, consonant. So we're going to double that consonant and add our EST, the saddest. Number two, we've got most comfortable. This is really easy. If you want to do the opposite of comfortable, it just becomes uncomfortable, right? So the most uncomfortable. Right? Number three, then, we have easiest. What is the opposite of easy? It's hard. What do we do with hard? We just add EST, right? The hardest. Number four, we've got, oh, wow, this looks really weird <laughs> because we've got one, two, three, then it says five, six, six. So I don't know why the numbers are messed up here, but of course it's supposed to be number four, best, 
What is the opposite of best? It's worst, right? The best, the worst. Okay, number five, we've got uh, nearest. What is the opposite of nearest? Of course, it is the farthest or the furthest. Furthest is, furthest is weird. Um, I prefer farthest. It, eh, either one is both kind of funny sounding. Number six, the most expensive, the least expensive, right? Or the cheap, cheapest, right? The cheapest thing in Canada is your electricity bill. It's the only cheap thing if you live in British Columbia. Okay guys, so we got all of that done. In the second class, of course, we're supposed to be talking about vocab, 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 right? So the vocab today though is not terribly exciting stuff. Um, the vocab today is kind of boring. Um, what it is, is a list of adjectives with their comparative form and superlative form. Obviously, we cannot cover all of this stuff here, or it would take about two classes, be terribly boring, and you guys would be pretty angry at me. But let's just take a quick look and look at a few examples. Most of these adjectives here are ones that you guys are already familiar with, and they're pretty simple. So take a look, guys. We have the positive form, comparative form, superlative form. So we have things like able, angry, ancient, anxious, attractive, bad, beautiful, big, black, bold, brave, bright, brilliant, broad, busy, calm, careful, careless, cheap, cheerful, clean, clear, clever, close, cold, comfortable, complicated, cool, curly, dangerous, dark, dear, etc., 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 right? And then we have their comparative form and their superlative form. But I think basically what this is for you guys is this sheet here is a very good reference for you guys, right? That you can maybe use later. If you're thinking like, oh, yeah, I know that adjective, but I forgot how to make the superlative form, boom. Or I forgot the comparative form, boom. You can always refer to this, right? Because able becomes abler, ablest, right? Angry, angrier, angriest. Ancient, more ancient, most ancient. Anxious, more anxious, most anxious. Attractive, more attractive, most attractive, right? So most of these adjectives here, guys, you guys are okay with, right? But use this as a reference point. So instead of this, guys, what we should look at is a list of as, as similes. Hmm. Now, what are similes, right? We have a lot of different similes here, and we have their meaning on the right. Now again, this is a very extensive list here. So we can't look at the whole list, it would take too long. But similes are pretty interesting, because similes are when you are comparing two things, and they can be used with a lot of different kind of metaphors or meanings, right? So this is when you're using as blank, as blank. Okay, so this is a list of well-known as blank, as similes, right? Our first one here is as alike as two peas in a pod. So the meaning of this is identical or nearly so, right? So if I said, let's think of an example here. Brian and Ryan. Brian and Ryan are as alike as two peas in a pod. That would mean that Brian and Ryan are basically identical or they are nearly identical. So that would mean Brian and Ryan look similar, act similar, speak in a similar way, etc., etc. They're really similar to each other. 
they are two peas in a pod, right? Now, for example, I could say, like, my daughter that was just born, her name is Lila, she looks very similar to my older daughter, Mira, right? So I could say, Lila and Mira are as alike as two peas in a pod. Mira and Lila look very similar, and they kind of act similar, right? Anyhow, guys, let's take a look at the next one. We have as big as a bus. The meaning of this is just something is very big, right? So if we said that, we could just say he is as big as a bus. That just means he is very big, right? He is big or he is huge, right? He is as big as a bus. He's big. Or sometimes we say as big as an elephant. Again, he's very big. As black as coal. Coal is that black rock that we burn to produce fire or energy, right? There are lots of coal burning fire power plants around the world. And we would say they are as big or, you know, <laughs> no, I'm not using a simile here. Anyhow, those plants create a lot of pollution. But anyhow, coal is a black rock. It's very, very black, right? So if you want to say something is completely black, you could say as black as coal, right? So you might want to say the night is as black as coal. So it's a very dark night, right? Okay as blind as a bat, right? Bats are usually well known for being kind of blind, right? They use a kind of sonar in order to see things instead. So if you want to say like somebody, you know, has bad vision, your good friend Sarah, you know, she always has had bad vision, right? She, you're like, hey Sarah, look at that. She's like, I can't see it, I can't see it. You're like, gee Sarah, um, you are as blind as a bat, right? Like you can't see anything. You're as blind as a bat. You are completely blind. Or as blind as a mole. Completely blind again. As bold as brass. Sorry guys, I think, actually this one, I'm gonna make a note here. As bold as brass, I have never used this before. As brave as a lion is good though. If somebody says, you are as brave as a lion, that means you're a very brave person. As bright as a button. She is as bright as a button. She is very clever, right? Very smart. As bright as a new pin. Also very bright and shiny, but I don't use that one. Busy as a bee. Very, very commonly used simile, right? I am as busy as a bee. This means I am very busy because bees are well known for being very busy, industrious little insects, right? So if you want to say that you're busy, you could say, I am as busy as a bee. I'm as busy as a bee. I'm super busy. As calm as a mill pond. Skip, never use it before. As clear as a bell. That just means very, very clear, right? As clear as crystal, as clear as a whistle. They all have the same meaning. It just means very clear. My favorite one here, though, is as clear as crystal. That is the one that I most often use. Like if somebody says, if I understood what somebody said, and they asked me, like, is that clear? I'd say, that is as clear as crystal. Like, I totally understand what you're saying. It's as clear as crystal. And of course, crystal is that kind of material, right? Maybe people use it for expensive jewelry or, you know, something like that. So as clear as crystal. Super clear to me. As cold as ice. That's a good one. As cold as ice means super cold, right? Super, super, super cold. So sometimes if I want to say somebody's behavior, is really cold, right? I'd be like, man, you are as cold as ice, right? Like you are pretty scary and like you don't have emotions. You are as cold as ice. Um, I'm trying to think 
who would be a good, uh, yeah, like the Terminator, if you guys have ever watched the movie Terminator, uh, excellent movie, anyhow, the Terminator is as cold as ice, right, the Terminator has no feelings, he's just super cold, right, now, when we're talking about this cold here, it can mean like physically cold or like behavior wise, right? Emotionally cold, right? Um, so you could say like, hey, this beer is as cold as ice. Like it's a really, really cold beer, right? Uh, but this could also be used to talk about somebody's emotional state, right? Like they don't have emotions. They're just very cold. And you could also use this as cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber, I actually do use this um, simile here. If you say somebody is as cool as a cucumber, it just means they're very cool. Now, cool again, this can have two different meanings. It can mean cool as in like the weather is cool, right? Opposite of warm. But this can also mean like cool, like cool guy, cool dude, right? So in that way, you could also say, you know, he's as cool as a cucumber like he is a cool guy, right? What a what a cool dude. He's as cool as a cucumber, right? Uh, bu -bu 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 so I don't know who is a cool guy. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is a really cool guy. Not really, actually, but anyhow, I'm gonna use Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is as cool as a cucumber. Cucumber is not a very popular vegetable, but um. But I like cucumbers. Anyhow, as cunning as a fox, this one is quite commonly used as well. Foxes are well known for being kind of clever, trickster-like animals, right? So if we say somebody is as clever as a fox, we're saying they're a very clever person, obviously, right? Um, who is a very clever person? Hmm, ah, okay, do you guys know Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia? I think that he is a very clever guy. So I might say Putin is as clever as a fox. He's a clever guy. Uh, now, don't confuse Putin with Putin, right? Putin is the president of Russia. Poutine is a delicious Canadian dish. Anyhow, moving on further, maybe one more example before we move on over to the backside and I erase the board. Uh, okay, as dead as the dodo. So the dodo is referring to the dodo bird, which was, I believe, on an island off of the east coast of Africa, where there was, the, anyhow, a long time ago, the Europeans found this African island off the coast of East Africa and they found this bird called the dodo which I believe the dodo could not fly and the dodo was not good at running away it was a pretty stupid animal so within no time the Europeans kept hunting them and eating them because I guess they were kind of delicious they taste a lot of like they tasted a lot like chicken and anyhow basically the dodo went extinct because the dodo bird was just kind of dumb so the dodo bird is well known for being kind of stupid. So if we say, and also extinct, it's also well known for being extinct. So if we say somebody is as dead as the dodo, is dead, it's extinct, whatever. So like, let's say your TV dies, right? And you're not able to fix your TV. You're like, man, my TV is as dead as the dodo. Like, you're just not going to be able to fix that TV is dead as the dodo. Okay, guys, so there's a lot of good similes. So remember, what you're doing with similes is that you are using an expression to really emphasize that something is really clever, really dark, really smart, really whatever, right? And you're doing it in kind of a fun way, right? So, you know, big as a bus, or the night is as black as coal, blind as a bat, busy as a bee, clear as crystal, etc., etc., etc. Whenever you're using these similes, you're just really trying to exaggerate or emphasize that somebody is really like this, or something is really like this, right? Because you're comparing the two. But let's continue with our list for a little bit more. I just want to erase what I have on the board first. Maybe I'll keep the examples 
up here for the next list. But so turn over to the back side. We have as def as a post. So this post here means like just a piece of wood stuck in the ground. A post would be for a fence, right? And a post is just basically a piece of wood. A piece of wood does not listen, right? So if we say you're as deaf as a post, it means you are completely deaf. You can't hear. Now, most of the time when you're using this, you're not actually talking about a deaf person, right? You're just talking about someone who's not good at listening, right? So this is something my wife would probably like to say to me. My wife would often say, you are as deaf as a post, right? Because you know, when you're, a, when you're a guy and you're in a relationship with your girlfriend or your wife, you know, maybe you're good at hearing, but you're not good at listening, right? Because sometimes your wife or girlfriend is talking about, you know, like the same thing again and again, and you just kind of stop listening. You know, usually it's not your fault, right? You're just, you know, you get distracted or you're just thinking about something that's more important to you. <laughs> and then, anyhow, so your wife might say, hey, you're as deaf as a post. You never listen to me. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I heard you. I just didn't listen. Sorry. Anyhow, next one is as drunk as a lord. Okay, guys, I love this expression. I like this simile, but I've never used this before. It looks really awesome, though. It just means somebody is completely drunk. If you said, hey, man, you are as drunk as a lord, you're saying you are super drunk. But I'm not going to write this down because I've never used this myself. That's a really cool one. Um, next two are both for dry. As dry as a bone, as dry as dust, it just means really, really dry, like in texture. There's no wetness to it. There's no moisture, right? I use as dry as a bone. I don't use as dry as dust, right? Um, but if you, you could say something like, oh, I feel as dry as a bone. Meaning here, of course, is just you feel very dry, right? That's it. I feel as dry as a bone, I am dry. Okay, moving on, as dull as dishwater. Bo that just means dull or boring. I'm sorry guys, I'm not gonna recommend this one. I just don't use this myself. Uh, but as easy as ABC or as easy as apple pie, I use both of these. And this is used to just say that something is easy to do. So maybe I would say here, for me, Mm, what is something that's easy, easy for me to do? Oh, I'm really good at making lasagna. Wow, surprise, surprise. I'm not very good at cooking, but I am good at making lasagna. I don't know why. Anyhow, for me, making lasagna. Lasagna. Now, we can do it in two different ways. Is as easy as ABC. Or is as easy as pie. And just remember, in the end, they both have the same meaning. This thing is easy to do. So when you're using this, and this is really commonly used, and I use both of these expressions, I think I use ABC more often. You want to say doing something is as easy as ABC. So whatever that thing is for that person or for you, right? Maybe you are really good at playing soccer. So you could say, playing soccer is as easy as ABC, or playing soccer is as easy as pi, right? And you could add, for me, for that person, um, for Tom Cruise, acting is as easy as pi, right? Acting is as easy as ABC. He's a good actor, he knows what he's doing. All right, moving on here anyhow, as flat as a pancake just means that something is very flat, right? Um, so if you said, the ground is as flat as a pancake, just means the ground is very flat. This is used, but like, I don't know, we usually don't describe something as being flat, right? So it's just not a very exciting one. Anyhow, as free as a bird, this one is really good. If you are as free as a bird, you have a lot of freedom, right? You have a lot of independence. You can do whatever you want to do. You are as free as a bird, right? Um, so if I said like maybe, I don't know, uh, I'm starting a new life, right? 
I'm going to a new city with a new apartment and you know, blah, blah, blah. I could say, man, I feel as free as a bird. Feel as free as a bird. Uh, total independence, total freedom, free as a bird. Okay, next one we have as fresh as a daisy. Sorry guys, I don't use it, skip. As gentle as a lamb, this is used, right? If you wanna say somebody is a very gentle person, right? Um, you'd say they're as gentle as a lamb. So I'm trying to think who, who is really well known for being gentle? Actually, I can't really think of anybody, but let's just say uh, Bob. Bob is as gentle as a lamb. So Bob, he's just a really gentle guy, right? Okay, moving on. As happy as a lark, sorry, don't use it, skip it. As hard as nails, this is commonly used. If somebody is as hard as nails, they are a tough, tough person, right? So think of like a UFC fighter or, you know, a boxer or a wrestler, somebody that's really well known for being, you know, like really strong, really tough guy, right? Um, now, maybe in Canada, maybe I'm going to describe some criminals. Um, so in Canada, we have the one organized criminal group. They are bikers. They, they drive motorcycles. They're really tough guys. You do not want to have trouble with bikers. So I'm going to say here, bikers are as tough as nails. Kind of gross people in general. Um, well, not all of them, I'm sure. But yeah, maybe it's rude to say that. But yeah, they're really, really tough guys. Next one is as hot as hell. Very, very commonly used to say that it's really hot outside. If you said today, it is as hot as hell. You're saying it's just really hot weather today. Now, you can use this also to describe a person, right? You know, like, whoa, Sandy's really hot. Wow, look at her, bleh. right? Or a guy, like, you know, well, you know, like if you're some hot guy, I, I, ugh, yeah, I, I don't know, that, that doesn't, sorry, I don't play for that team. That doesn't really work for me, but whatever. Um, yeah, but if you just say today, is as hot as hell. I'm just saying it's really, really hot today because of course hell is the opposite of heaven, right? Hell is where the devil is, bah, right? And it's just really, really hot down there. So today is as hot as hell. Or like maybe you just cooked a dish and it's too hot. You can't eat it right now because like if you touch it with your tongue, it's gonna burn your tongue. You say, man, that dish is as hot as hell. Don't eat it, let's wait five minutes, right? Okay, so hot as hell, as hungry as a bear, as hungry as a wolf, as hungry as a horse is another one that's not included here. I use wolf more than I use other ones. If you say I am as hungry as a wolf, you're just saying I feel really, really hungry, right? I, like, I'm like a wolf right now because I want to eat something, right? Um, so yeah, I am as hungry as a wolf because I skipped breakfast, right? So I didn't have breakfast this morning. So right now, it's, this is actually true. I am as hungry as a wolf. Um, I woke up kind of late because I had to do all this cleaning in my apartment last night. I won't explain, but it took too long. All right, um, so hungry as a wolf, as innocent as a lamb. I like this expression. He is as innocent as a lamb. He's very innocent, he's not worldly, but I can't recommend this because I've never used it myself, so let's skip. As large as life conspicuously present, sorry guys, never used this before, skip. As light as a feather, yes, I, did, I have used this quite a few times. Um, if you say something is as light as a feather, it is just very light. So I don't know if you guys have ever tried those like uh, MacBook Airs, right? You know, they have the MacBook Pros, like the really, really super duper awesome Mac laptops, right? But then they have the MacBook Airs, which are, you know, not as powerful, but very thin, very compact, easy to carry around. The new ones are super light, like you can pick them up with your pinky finger. They are so incredibly light. 
So you could say, for example, the new MacBook Airs are as light as a feather. They are super, super light. All right, guys. So another big list of examples following some of these similes. These ones are pretty good. I do want to continue further. I, um, yeah, I think we can actually, oh my God, actually, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Well, let's continue this for a little bit longer um, and see how it goes. The list is very extensive, but let me erase this here. Let's take a look at some more. Now, of course, keep in mind, I am skipping some of these. The ones I am skipping are ones that I don't personally use. That doesn't mean they're useless, but there's a pretty good chance that they're not used in North American, Canadian and English, or Canadian and American English, if I don't use them, right? Okay, but let's take a look at some more ones here. Um, as mad as a hatter, sorry, don't use it. As mad as a hornet, this one I do use. A hornet is like a kind of bee, right? So if we say he is as mad as a hornet, he's very, very angry. Do use that one, not too bad. Um, I won't make an example. Next one, an obstinate as a mule, sorry, don't use. As old as the hills, sorry, don't use that one either. All right, so continuing onwards here, guys, take a look at the sheet that starts with as pale as death. This one I do use, as pale as death. You know, if somebody dies, after a while, their skin becomes very white, very pale, P-A-L-E, right? And it just means if somebody says this, you look as pale as death. It just means like you look like you're kind of sick or like you've been scared or there's something wrong with you, right? Because you're very, very white looking. You are as pale as death. You are super pale. You're as pale as death. As plain as day. This is very, very commonly used. If something is as plain as day, it's easy to understand. It's very, very clear, right? Um, so we had other expressions like that, like as clear as crystal. But as plain as day is also very commonly used. Um, so you might say to somebody, hey, I understand your explanation. Your explanation was as plain as day. And there you go. Okay. As poor as a church mouse. Sorry, guys. Never use that one. As proud as a peacock. I've heard this one. I've never used it. It's not bad, but I can't really recommend it. As pure as snow. This one I do use. Snow is a very pure element, right? It's just made. It's just rain that's turned into snow because it's too cold, right? So as pure as snow means like very pure, very innocent, right? So of course we could say children are as pure as snow, right? Like children are quite innocent little people, right? As quick as lightning. This one I do use. As quick as lightning just means very, very quick, right? Um, I don't know. That car, or no, that jet plane is as quick as lightning. Like it is very, very, very fast. Okay. After that, as sharp as a razor just means something is very sharp. Um, now, very sharp, again, can have two meanings. It can mean like, you know, with a knife. The knife is very sharp, so it can cut through something very easily, right? But sharp as an adjective can also be used to say that somebody is very smart, right? Um, so if you said basically, he is as sharp as a razor, because of course a razor is used to shave, which I should have done this morning but I was too tired and I woke up late, so unfortunately I didn't shave. But if you say he's as sharp as a razor, you're just saying he is very intelligent. But if you say that knife is as sharp as a razor, that would just mean the knife is very sharp, right? Okay, as thick as a dog, 
This is used. You look as sick as a dog. You're just saying to the person, like, you look really sick, man. You look as sick as a dog. Like, you should go home and get some rest because, like, you look awful, right? Um, that one is that one's good. I often use that one. As silent as the dead, as silent as the grave. <coughs> as silent as the dead, I do use, right? You, you are as silent as the dead. It just means you are very quiet, right? Because, like, dead people don't make noise, right? Dead people are quiet. So that's all that means, right? You are as silent as the dead, okay? As slippery as an eel. Eel looks like a snake, it lives in the water, it's pretty delicious. Um, if you don't know what an eel is, just quickly Google image it. Um, but eels are well known for being slippery. It's hard to grab an eel because they have a very slippery body and they live in the water. So if you say, you are as slippery as an eel. You're saying you're a slippery person. But that means like you shouldn't be trusted, right? It doesn't mean that you are physically slippery, although I guess it could mean that. But it usually means that you are slippery, you evade questions, you're not to be trusted. So thieves, and of course you guys know what thieves are, right? People who steal stuff. Thieves are usually as slippery as an eel, right? Okay, but let's move on. As slow as a snail or as slow as a tortoise. Both of these are used to describe someone who's very, very slow, right? Um, my friend Chris was as slow as a snail, right? He just wasn't a smart guy, Chris. So, yeah, that's why. Now, um, this could mean slow in two different ways. You guys know that slow is basically the opposite of fast, right? But it also, when you say someone is slow, it can also mean mentally slow. Their brain doesn't work very quickly. You're like, Hey, how are you doing? And your friend's like, uh, yeah, good, good, I'm doing good. Right? You say, like, man, Chris is, he is as slow as a snail. Like, that guy, his brain is just not working, right? Okay, as smooth as silk just means something is very smooth. Um, this one is used. Like, maybe you describe somebody's voice as being as smooth as silk. They have a smooth, nice sounding voice, right? Um, especially when they sing, right? Um, uh, who's a good singer? Yeah, Bruno Mars, yeah. So let's write a real example here. Um, yeah, let's say Bruno, oops, I noticed the speakers are on. Um, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars's voice is as smooth as silk, right? He has a very nice, silky voice. It sounds good. So Bruno Mars's voice is as smooth as silk. Okay, let's move on here though. Um, after that, we've got as snug as a bug in a rug. This one is used. I, I don't use this too, mu too much myself, but if you say you look as snug as a bug in a rug, you're just saying like, you look like a bug, like in a rug, like you look so comfortable, right? Um, so that's all that means. As sober as a judge means you are sober. Sober means that you are not <clears throat> intoxicated. You are not drunk. You are not on drugs. You are completely fine. You are awake. You're mentally prepared. Because um, judges are well known for, you know, being competent, intelligent people, right? They're not the kind of people that go out the night before a court case and go get drunk or do drugs or something stupid, right? So judges are well known for being logical, smart, competent people. So if you say, I am as sober as a judge. You're just trying to tell the other person, like, I am not drunk. My mind is completely clear. I am using my brain effectively, right? Okay, so more examples there, guys. Um, all the ones I skip are not that great. Let me erase this. We've still got quite a few more to take a look at, um, but let me erase these ones here.
Okay, and let us continue a little bit more here. Ah, as solid as a rock means something is solid. Now, this solid can also mean trustworthy, right? Um, so I could say, for example, my brother is as solid as a rock. Now, what I'm saying here is my brother is reliable, durable, and trustworthy. Basically, I'm saying you can trust my brother. He is as solid as a rock, right? He's not going to let you down. He's not going to lie to you. Um, he's going to do what he says. He's as solid as a rock. Okay, moving on further. The next one I don't use is sour as vinegar. That could be used to describe the flavor of something. I've never used it myself, but you could. As stiff as a board, this is used. Now, stiff means like rigid, like not flexible, right? Like you guys have probably, you know, when you're a kid, you go to gym class or maybe you do yoga or whatever. And some people, they're just not flexible people. Or, you know, you're, they're like, hey, raise your arms. And somebody's like, ugh, ugh, right? Um, that person's very, very stiff. But this doesn't just mean physically stiff. If somebody is like kind of boring and they don't really know how to socialize, they don't know how to talk to other people, and they, maybe they don't like, you're like, hey man, let's go to a bar. And he's like, oh, I, I don't drink alcohol. I, uh, I prefer to go home and, uh, you know, make tuna sandwiches on the weekend, and that's what I do for fun. You'd be like, wow, man, that guy is as stiff as a board. So it can also kind of mean like boring, inflexible, not, I don't know, just, yeah, basically boring. Anyhow, uh, but that's a, that's a good one, actually. I do use that. Um, as straight as an arrow means straight. So that could mean something went as straight as an arrow. It went in like a straight path. Uh, if you said he is as straight as an arrow, it means he's a straight guy in that, again, he's like kind of trustworthy. He doesn't do stupid things, right? As strong as an ox means very, very strong because an ox is like a male bull, like a cow, a bull, right? Bulls are very strong creatures, right? So if we say he is as strong as an ox, this means he is very, very strong, obviously, right? Uh, maybe you guys know, you watch Game of Thrones. Um, you guys know, what's his name? Uh, the Mountain, right? Um, he is as strong as an ox. Actually, he's probably stronger, to be honest. But the Mountain from Game of Thrones is as strong as an ox. It's a very strong character in that TV show. But if you know someone who is very strong, or maybe you are very strong, right? You can say, I am as strong as an ox. Well, it's weird to say that about yourself, right? That's a little bit too proud. But anyhow, um, so that's the last one on that one. Backside, guys, we've just got a few more to take a look at. We're probably not going to finish this before the break, so we'll finish it after the break. Um, let's take a look at the next one. As stubborn as a mule or as stubborn as a donkey. Both of these are used. It just means someone is very stubborn. Um, children can be very stubborn when they're young. Actually, toddlers. Toddlers are, you know, age two, age three. Um, that's the age that my daughter, my older daughter is around. Whenever we try to feed her, <clears throat> you know, vegetables, she says, no, no, no. She doesn't want to eat it. So she can be really, really stubborn. So toddlers um, are as stubborn as mules or donkeys. And anyhow, as sturdy as an oak. An oak is a kind of tree. And oak trees are well known for being very strong. Um, so it just means they're very strong. Um, I've heard this one. I've never used it. so. Uh, the next one I really do like, though, as sure as death and taxes. We often say that in life, only two things are guaranteed, death and taxes. So in life, you will die, 
and you will pay taxes to the government, right? These two things are guaranteed in your life, right? It's kind of sad. I wish there were like more fun things, but if you want to say that something is a sure bet, something is really going to happen, then you would say it is as sure as death and taxes, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it is as sure as death and taxes. Like this thing will happen 100% because you, everybody dies and everybody pays taxes, right? Um, as tall as a gi giraffe, this is commonly used. Giraffes are really tall creatures, right? If you're a tall guy, you are as tall as a giraffe. But of course, I can say here, many basketball players are as tall as giraffes, right? Giraffes are very tall, and a lot of basketball players are very tall. Okay, guys, but let's stop it there. Let's take a break. After the break, we'll continue with, it, with this for a little bit. Then, of course, we need to actually talk about your assignment for this week. I'll provide a little bit of an example. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, so let's take a break. I'll see you again in 10 minutes.
Welcome back to Live PST. We are in our third class. Before the break, we were just continuing with these similes here. So I just want to continue through till the end of this list, right? And we just looked at many basketball players are as tall as giraffes. So that just means that many basketball players are very tall, right? So let's look down further. As thin as a rake. If you are as thin as a rake, you are very, very thin. Um, I would say here a good example would be many super models are as thin as a rake. Now, of course, supermodels are, you know, um, supposed to be very beautiful women, but many of them are very, very thin, sometimes too thin, right? So we can say many supermodels are as thin as a rake. They're super thin. As timid as a rabbit, this is used to describe someone who's very timid. Timid people don't ask questions. Timid people appear to lack confidence or not be courageous, right? They're like too hesitant. Like a timid student, it's like, mm, uh, yeah, well, mm, be quiet. Mm. So um, I would say here a good example is some quiet students are as timid as a rabbit. They're just very, very quiet and very timid. As tough as leather, as tough as nails, as tough as old boots. All these expressions are good, but I only use as tough as nails. Um, and that just is used to describe someone who's very tough. He is as tough as nails. He is, whoops, as tough as nails. He's a tough guy. Okay, other than that, guys, as welcome as a skunk. No, 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 I don't use that. As white as a ghost, that's another expression that means somebody looks very, very pale. That is pretty commonly used. Um, somebody might say, like, hey, are you sick? You look as white as a ghost. That just means you look very white. As white as a sheet, eh, that's also used. I don't use it so much. As white as snow, that could be used to describe the color of something, not really a person, but that can be used. As wise as Solomon, no, I don't use that. But as wise as an owl, yes, right? Um, so maybe think of a great politician in history, like Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill was, because of course he has passed away a long time ago, Winston Churchill was as wise as an owl, right? He was a very wise guy. He had a lot of wisdom, so he's as wise as an owl. All right, guys, so we went over that entire list of similes. The ones I skipped are not very good. You can still use them, but the ones I did make examples for are really, really good. So anyhow, it's a lot of good stuff. Let me erase this list here, though. Um, now, honestly, there is an exercise for this. I want to take a quick look at that with you guys. Then I want to take a look at um, ba -ba 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 our do 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 what I want to do. I want to take a look at our assignment for this week, right? So. Taking a look here, the similes exercise is this one here. It says similes using as dot 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 as, right? And this is a worksheet. So there are some examples here. It says a simile is a fun way to compare something. Here are some examples. A person with a bad sunburn can be described this way. Kelly is as red as a lobster. A person who is stubborn can be described this way. Chris is as stubborn as a mule. Okay, now in exercise A, it says use each word one time to make a simile. Number one, we have here as blind as a bat. Two, we have bell. 
So we have to fill in the blank here with some kind of adjective, right? Uh, now you could say, remember what a bell is. A bell is a very clear sound. Ding, ding. So actually, this could be as clear as a bell, right? So number two. Oh, sorry, that's actually number three. Sorry, guys. Um, so number three is as clear as a two. Sorry, guys. Number two was something as an eel. Remember, an eel is very slippery. So number two is actually as slippery as an eel. Number four, we have feather. Feathers are light, right? So number four should be as light as a feather. Okay, number five. Ah, bee. Bees are very busy, right? As busy as a bee. Number six, we have hills. Um, eh, I don't really use hills, but I guess it's supposed to be old. As old as the hills. But uh, this one, guys, I can't recommend. Number seven, as something as a daisy. Hmm. Daisy are, are fresh, so as fresh as a daisy. Okay, now you guys get the idea here. Um, oops, daisy is without any. Yeah, I think you guys get the idea. What I would recommend you guys do is try to go through this list yourselves. Um, fill in the blanks with appropriate adjectives that match that animal or that object and try your best. I believe you guys also have the answer key, so challenge yourselves first, try this out, and if you're not sure, check the answer key. But let's take a look at exercise B. That's more difficult and more interesting. So let's do exercise B together and then after exercise B, let's talk about your assignment for this week. Okay, so exercise B. And we have an example here. Uh, it says as hard as a rock because it says very hard. Okay, number one. Number one says very sick. Okay, so you're as sick as what, right? Or maybe you look as white as, because if you look very pale, you're probably also sick. So I might say for number one, eh, you could say as sick as a dog, which means very sick, or you look as pale as a ghost. Okay, let's take a look guys. Number two, we have very strong. What simile can we make to describe someone who is very strong? Ox, right? So you are as strong as an ox. Now, remember, we could also use some other expressions, like instead of strong, you might want to say somebody's tough. So you could also say, you are as tough as nails. Okay, all right, number three. Very clever. Mm, like a fox, right? You are as clever as a fox. Okay, number four, very embarrassed. Oh man, what's a good one for embarrassed? Huh. You are as embarrassed as something. Hmm. Or you look embarrassed. Hmm. Okay, let's see who he is. Um, now you can say like if somebody's blushing, 
because they are embarrassed, right? Because they did something shameful or something kind of something kind of stupid. Um, we sometimes compare people to a beet. A beet is a kind of vegetable that looks very red or sometimes purple, um, or at least the inside is purple. The outside is usually, I think, red. He is as red. Whoops. He is as red as a beet. He's as red as a beet. He looks very embarrassed, right? Okay. Number five, very cold, unfriendly. Hmm. Uh, like ice. So you are, or she is, he is, you are as cold as ice, right? Such a terrible personality. Easy to see. Easy to see. Um, easy to see. I, I'm not sure if they mean this is very clear or this is easy to do. Um, if it's clear, it is, it is as plain as day could be used, right? Ah, it's as plain as day, like it's easy to understand, it's easy to see, right? That would work. Um, so yeah, okay, number seven, very stubborn. Children are very stubborn, so let's say children are as stubborn as a mule, right? Kind of donkey. And lastly, number eight, guys, very quiet. How can we make a simile for someone who is very quiet? Uh, maybe you could describe the person being similar to a mouse. Mice are pretty quiet. So he is as quiet as a mouse. All right, it's very quiet. Okay, so we finished exercise B, right? Not bad. Um, all of this stuff is about similes, right? Uh, what do I want to say? Similes are not something you have to use, but similes are something that if you get used to using them, if you do use them, it shows that you have a pretty good understanding of the language. You don't have to use them right all the time. If you made a mistake with a simile, it's totally fine. And furthermore, you don't have to just stick to using these similes here. You could try to make up your own similes, right? He's as hungry as a cheetah. He's as hungry as a lion, right? Now, usually we say he's as hungry as a wolf, right? Or a horse. But, you know, you want to use a different animal? Go ahead. People will probably understand, right? Or he's as strong as a, a bear, right? It's supposed to be ox, but bears are also strong. So, you know, try to make up your own similes. Play with the language. It's kind of fun. Similes are pretty interesting. But like I said before, <coughs> they're not essential. This is something you don't have to know. And this is definitely something you don't have to memorize. But if you do spend the time thinking about similes and trying to use them effectively, it can kind of help you out, right? So let's talk about your assignment for this week. Um, so your assignment is superlative stories. So this week, your assignment will be to write a descriptive story from your life based on a superlative. You need to think about which kind of life experience you want to share. So that's the first thing you got to do. Do you want to think about the happiest point in your life, the weirdest, the creepiest, the funnest, uh, or sorry, funniest, um, the scariest, the most frightening, the, the most fantastic, you know, it's your choice, right? The choice is yours. Now, depending on the type of story you choose, be aware of your tone and word choice. Now, your story must be a minimum of four to five paragraphs and include at least five of the vocabulary words and at least 10 other adjectives in the comparative and or superlative form that we will explore in Monday's class. So the ones we just explored, right? Um, which is technically Tuesday, but anyhow. Um, please remember to use transitional phrases of agreement and contrast to make your writing flow more smoothly. These include, likewise, 
In addition, furthermore, however, although, despite that, etc. Your descriptive writing is due before class on Tuesday, so try your best and have fun. Now, of course, guys, this is a short week, so that kind of changes the when your assignment would be due. I think it'll be due, you'll have like two days, right? You've got later today, you got tomorrow, so you can submit it on Thursday. So take your time. Uh, but yeah, you need to think of a story, right? And this has to be framed around a superlative, right? And within your writing, you need to try to use comparatives and superlatives at least, I think it said 10 times. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got to use either a comparative or superlative 10 times. Maybe refer to that list of adjectives with the comparative and superlative forms, right? And try your best with that. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to use the comparative and superlative form. You also want to keep in mind transitional phrases of agreement. Now, there is no set order for what this writing should be like. I would like you guys to try to write five paragraphs, to follow the five paragraph style. So, what is the five paragraph style? Of course, it is introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, body paragraph three, and the conclusion, right? Now, before you get into that, the first thing you need to think is what kind of story is this going to be, right? It has to be a superlative story. So it has to be the funniest, about the funniest moment in your life, the scariest moment in your life, the happiest moment in your life, or something like that, right? And then you have to start creating it. What I think you should do is like introduce what kind of story it is going to be, then your body paragraphs one, two, three, that's going to be more like, you know, beginning the story, talking more about the story, what happened, and then like kind of the conclusion of that story. And within the story, of course, trying to use comparatives and trying to use superlatives. So I'll try to give you guys a brief example. I might not be able to finish this because we don't have a ton of time here, right? Uh, but I also need to think, what kind of story do I want to tell you guys? Do I want to tell you guys the creepiest story in my life, or the funniest, the happiest, the weirdest? Hmm. <coughs> trying to think. Um. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um, it's kind of hard for me to think and I'm not going to put too much thought into it right now because I don't want to waste too much time. Um, actually, I'm going to talk about something that happened last night. Um, it's actually not the scariest story, but um, yeah, it was like kind of scary. No, it was scary. It was scary, but um, not the scariest story. But it's a pretty good way to start. So maybe I'm going to start with a question. What was the most frightening moment in my life? Well, Actually, it happened last night on the, wait, what day was that? Today is the 4th of August, right? On the 3rd of August. Let me, let me tell you what happened. All right, guys, so I'm keeping my introduction pretty short here. I'm starting with a question. It, sometimes when you don't know how to start a, a paragraph or, well, not a paragraph, a paper <coughs> or an assignment, 
Sometimes it's an easy way to start by asking a question and then getting into answering the question, right? So what was the most frightening moment in my life? Well, actually it happened last night on the 3rd of August. Let me tell you what happened. Okay, so then I'm going to get into BP1 or body paragraph 1. So we got the introduction and now I'm just going to write BP1, body paragraph 1. Okay, now this is a story, so I'm not going to use like firstly, secondly, and thirdly, right? I have to try to make it more interesting that, than that. Um, last night, around 7.30, my wife was cooking dinner. Now remember, we have to keep in mind here that we want to try to use a lot of comparatives and superlatives, right? My wife is a better cook than I am. Okay, so there is an example of a comparative. So there's one, right? A better cook than I am. Actually, in my opinion, she is the best cook in the world. Okay, she's the best cook in the world. So there's another superlative. So one comparative, one superlative, so I got two out of ten, right? Suddenly, While cooking, she rushed into the bedroom and said, There's a fire. Ah, uh, so I should say here, of course, I ran out of the room and saw that flames were coming out of the fan above our stove. Okay, and that'll be it for my first body paragraph. Um, I need to keep in mind, I want to use more comparatives and uh, superlatives. So hopefully in the second body paragraph, <coughs> I can use some more. So let's think about this, guys. Our introduction, what was the most frightening moment in my life? Well, actually, it happened last night on the 3rd of August. Let me tell you what happened. So body paragraph one, talking about the story, right? Last night around 7.30, my wife was cooking dinner. My wife is a better cook than I am, comparative. Actually, in my opinion, she is the best cook in the world, superlative. Suddenly, while cooking, she rushed into the bedroom and said, there's a fire. Of course, I ran out of the room and saw that flames were coming out of the fan above our stove. Okay, so the body, the first part of the body paragraph, or like body paragraph one, I'm kind of talking, like getting into the story. Um, this is just the first part. I'm going to divide the story into three parts. Body paragraph one, two, three. But let me erase this. Now, I need to keep in mind, like I said before, I need to try to use more comparatives and superlatives. So let's see what we can do in body paragraph two. So I'm going to write here BP2. My wife and I started to panic, but she looked 
far more freaked out than I was. So another comparative. She looked far more freaked out than I was. We started throwing pots of water at the fire, but it kept getting worse and worse. It was bigger than just, okay, another comparative, just a moment ago. I called our landlord and they rushed down faster <clears throat> than Usain Bolt to our apartment. Okay, so another one, so we got three, four, five, <coughs> and they handed me a fire extinguisher. And although Although I was a bit clueless. So clueless means like you don't really know very much or you don't really know what to do, right? I was able to use it and put out the fire. Of course, my wife and kids had already escaped. It was <coughs> more frightening than meeting my parents' in-law. Of course, that's kind of a joke. All right, guys. Um, so let's think about this here and what I've written. So. I kind of came to the end of the story, but actually there's more than this and that's what I'm going to get into body paragraph three with. But body paragraph two, my wife and I started to panic, right? Because of course there's a fire coming out of the fan. But she looked far more freaked out than I was. So there's a comparative, right? We started throwing pots of water at the fire, but it kept getting worse and worse. It was bigger than just a moment ago. I called our landlord and they rushed down faster than Usain Bolt to our apartment. They handed me a fire extinguisher and although I was a bit clueless, I was able to use it and put out the fire. Of course, my wife and kids had already escaped. It was more frightening than meeting my parents a lot. <laughs> right? Um, so I managed to, I used two comparatives and superlatives. Well, no, no, no one of each in the first body paragraph. Then we have a comparative here, three, uh, another comparative, four, uh, faster than Usain Bolt, another comparative here, five, and then last, it was more frightening than meeting my parents-in-law, 
another comparative six. So I should try to use maybe four more comparatives or superlatives throughout my writing. But I got body paragraph three and I got my conclusion. So I still got some space here. But let me erase this here. extinguisher, um, this, the substance you're spraying is, well, it's called fire retardant. And of course, it includes a lot of chemicals, right? These chemicals turn into kind of this white, yellowish dust. And it goes everywhere. And that's what I didn't know. Um, so you have to do a lot of cleaning, anyhow, than it ever been this yellowish dust spread everywhere in the apartment. I felt exhausted more exhausted. So we got another comparative here. Then I had felt for a long time, but I needed to clean up the apartment. I spent the next four to five hours cleaning the apartment by myself while my wife and kids ate pizza. <laughs> this sounds really bad. I'm not saying my wife and kids are lazy, but you know, they couldn't be in the room and I'm the guy, so I should take charge. Anyhow, ate pizza in another apartment. Okay, what can I say here? I cleaned up fairly well and some things were cleaner okay so another comparative than they had been before that being said, it was a pain in the neck. Okay, so actually I wish I kind of wrote more here. I wanted to write more, um, but I still have the conclusion to kind of finish off the story, right? Anyhow, so, and I was able to use a few more comparatives here. Three? Yeah, yeah. So I only have to use one more comparative or superlative. 
Um, so the fire was out, but now there was a huge mess. Our apartment was dirtier than it had ever been. This yellowish dust spread everywhere in the apartment. I felt exhausted, more exhausted than I had felt for a long time, but I needed to clean up the apartment. I spent the next four to five hours cleaning the apartment by myself while my wife and kids ate pizza in another apartment. I cleaned up fairly well and some things were cleaner than they had been before. That being said, it was a pain in the neck. And that expression, pain in the neck, if you say something is a pain in the neck, he is a pain in the neck, she's a pain in the neck, it just means like something is like really annoying, right? And that's all it really means. But anyhow, so there's that. Um, so as far as using comparatives and superlatives are, I only got three here, one, two, three. But previously I'd gotten six, so that's nine. I just need to use one more in the conclusion. So let me erase body paragraph three. Um, our conclusion here will probably be a bit longer than it is for most of the other writing assignments you guys have to do. Because this conclusion here, because it's a story, I'm actually going to be concluding the story here. Um, so, our conclusion. Hmm. Later, after I had finished cleaning my landlord came back to my apartment. Together, we removed the fan. And my landlord informed me <coughs> that it was an electrical fire started because of bad engineering. Mm, what else could I say here? He told me that if we had been slower, the building would have burned down. Okay guys, um, I'll stop there for a second just to think about this a little bit. So my conclusion here I got later, after I'd finished cleaning, my landlord came back to my apartment. Together we removed the fan, sorry that looks a little bit messy, and my landlord informed me that it was an electrical fire started because of bad engineering. Um, yeah, uh, he told me that if we had been slower, so I have a comparative here, the building would have burned down. So that was an interesting point. Yeah, he said like if you guys had not acted sooner and started throwing water on it and then also later using the extinguisher, it would have burned down the whole building. Um, yeah, would have burned down. Um, hmm. He also said, we could sue the owner of the, well, our apartment unit. Anyhow, I'm not sure, 
I will do that. But the fire was definitely one of the most frightening and scariest moments in my life. And there we go. So I just want to finish it. Now, honestly, guys, uh, to be truthful, this is not the scariest moment in my life. It's just this one happened kind of recently, well, just last night. So it's kind of fresh in my memory, and that's why I was able to write about it here. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the most frightening and scariest moments in my life. Now, I just, now, most frightening, I'd used this before, so I wouldn't really count this as another instance where I'm using a superlative, but I'm also using the scariest, which is another um, adjective in the superlative form, so I would include that one. Um, so yeah, I think I've used at least 10 comparative or superlative adjectives, right? And there we go. All right, guys, so this is just my example. Of course, your one is going to be completely different because maybe you're not going to talk about the most frightening moment in your life. Um, you can, of course, the most frightening, the creepiest. But of course, you can also write about the happiest moments in your life, the funniest, the coolest, um, the most satisfying, uh, I don't know, the most successful moments in your life, the most unsuccessful moments in your life. Maybe you could write about some big failure that you have experienced or something like that. It's totally up to you. But yeah, you just want to keep in mind that you want to try to use 10 adjectives in the superlative or comparative form throughout your writing and you want to try to use transitional phrases. That's something that I wasn't really paying much attention to while I was writing this. But try to use things like however, although, and um, you know things like likewise, furthermore, in addition to, despite, yada, 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 right? So yeah, try your best and submit your paper later. But that's my example. I hope that example kind of helps you out a little bit, guys. I'm going to erase this here. And what else can we talk about? Well. Dum, 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 dum. Let me erase that. Dun, dun, dun. Now, of course, guys, um, as you know, this is a short week because we had a holiday here in British Columbia, Canada yesterday. Um, I hope you guys also had a good weekend. My weekend was actually pretty good. Nothing really special, but yeah, I went on a lot of walks with my kids, so they were pretty happy. Or at least, well, it's hard to tell with uh, my younger daughter because she's just a baby. But uh, yeah, we had a pretty good weekend until last night when there was that fire. Because um, that really sucks. And actually, later today, uh, my wife and I still need to do some cleaning. Um, so that won't be fun. And I need to contact the owner of my apartment again and probably start complaining uh, because yeah a lot like the story I wrote down was actually real and the landlord said that there was a major electrical issue with the fan and that's why the fire got started um, so that fire was going to happen at some point whether to us or somebody else and yeah it was just such a big issue so yeah um, anyhow but yeah I hope you guys had a good weekend too um, what I do think you guys should do when you are doing your writing is try to keep that list that you have here around you, right? That list of the positive form, comparative form, and the superlative form. Keep that close to you guys. Try to use this one. Try to use adjectives that maybe you are not very familiar with, ones that you are not comfortable with. If you're looking through that list and you find some that like, you don't know what they mean, Take a look at the meaning, try to understand them, and then try to use that in your own writing if you can, right? Now, of course, this superlative story that you're supposed to write, yeah, like, we're hoping that it's a true story, right? Hopefully this is really 
the happiest moment in your life or the scariest moment in your life or you know whatever it is right but you know like you can exaggerate like of course we don't know if you're telling the truth or not what i would recommend doing though is uh, picking a happy a sad or a great or fantastic moment in your life writing it down and then exaggerating it making it kind of stronger trying to use like comparatives and superlatives and another good thing to do though would be like in addition to keeping the comparative and superlative uh, adjective sheets with you guys maybe try to also use some similes that's another thing that I really should have tried to do when I was writing my stuff on the board I wasn't thinking about it at the time but if you can try to use at least one or two similes while you're writing it will make your writing look a lot better so yeah try your best with that um, and yeah we'll see how it goes Hopefully your writing will look pretty good and we'll have something fun to mark later this week, right? Now, again, another thing I need to tell you guys is because this is a short week, I think we will not be doing the listening that we usually do on Wednesdays. What we will be doing tomorrow is the stuff that we usually do on Tuesday, what this, the stuff we usually do on Thursday, we will do on Thursday, and the stuff we do on Friday, we will usually do on Friday. So we're just gonna be kind of removing the Wednesday listening class. Tomorrow we will do some reading and it should be a lot of fun like it usually is. All right guys, but that about does it for me. I know the class, we still got a couple of minutes left. I don't really have much more to tell you right now though. Sorry, I kind of went just a tiny bit too quick there, but I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, I hope this class, I know we started a little bit late, but I hope the class went well, and I will see you again tomorrow at 9 o'clock, not 10 o'clock, at 9. Okay, I will see you guys later. Thank you.